Hello and welcome to the channel. Today is all about the Templar healer for update 36 Fire Song. Templars are one of the best healers in the game. With so many utilities to pick from, you simply cannot go wrong with picking this class. With Templars having shards for major resource returns for your group, the ability to cleanse the group from harmful effects and so on. To give players more option on the build, especially those struggling with bar swapping at times, we simplified the build for a one bar setup. To understand how both the advanced two bar setup and a simple version of a one bar setup work, I will be going over the stats on the build, what skills I like to use, the passives that are essential for the build, what gear makes this build tick, and last, the CP setup. All of this is coming up next. Let's dive into the build starting off in our character sheet. Max Magica is at 32,800. Max Health is at 21,800, almost 900, with a max stamina at 13,000. Our recovery on the build can go a lot higher, especially on our back bar. We'll pop our potion here, apply our ability here, and here we go. With our Magicka recovery at 2,900, health recovery at 631, stamina recovery at 897, our spell damage at 3,900, and spell critical at 35.2%. For attributes on the build, we have 64 points into Magicka because the more Magicka we have, the stronger our heals will be for the build. Now for the Boon or Munda Stone, we are running the Ritual. This increases our healing done by 12% just to have stronger heals overall. You can switch this up if you feel like your Magicka recovery is a little too low. You can put more into Magicka recovery. Uh, you can do more into health. You could add more spell damage. We could do more spell critical. We could even max Magicka if we really want to. You have a couple of choices there. Now going over into our skills. Starting on our front bar here. Before we go through our skills, I just want to let everybody know that the way I have the bar set up doesn't mean this is the way you need to have it set up. So let's say Luminous Shards here. If you don't want it as your X button, you can put it as, let's say, a light left bumper, right bumper, B, and Y. You can move it around. Just keep in mind, though, as we go over passives, there are reasons why we have them on the bar the way we do. So let's get into the wit. With our first abilities found in the Adric Spear skill line, it is the fourth ability to unlock. Starts off as Spear Shard. We then morph it to Luminous Shards. We can cast this up to 28 meters with a 6 meter radius that lasts for 10 seconds and this does deal some damage on the on the initial hit and then damages the enemies in the area of, with magic every 1 second for the 10 second duration. Now the main reason we really want to use this is because any ally near the spear can activate the holy synergy and our synergy which restores 3,900 magicka and stamina. Which is really really nice especially like to cast on tanks and stuff because tanks use a lot of magic and stamina on their builds not only that it's nice to give just the general resources overall if you don't like the luminous shards skill what we could do is we could go all the way down into our undaunted skill line here and go with the fifth ability to unlock starts off as necrot orb we then morph it to energy orb this is an area with eight meters that lasts 10 seconds as well it has an orb that slowly floats forward healing allies every one second us included in this and allies near that globe can activate the healing combustion synergy causing the orb to explode and heal for some health and nearby allies restore 3900 stamina or magicka to the activator whichever maximum is higher so one just gives whichever maximum is higher while our spear gives both resources so i prefer giving both resources but if you like the healing orb you can use the healing orb you got a little choice there now next ability we have is up into our Restoration Staff skill line. Starts off as our first ability we to unlock. Starts off as Grand Healing. We then morph it to Lustrous Healing. This can be cast up to 28 meters with an 8 meter radius. It lasts for 15 seconds, healing us and our allies in the target area for a good chunk of health over those 15 seconds. So I'd like to use this because it's kind of nice to have a heal over time. Especially in an area if everybody's focused in that one area. Next ability we have is still in the Restoration Staff skill line. It is the second ability to lock starts off as Regeneration. We then morph it to Radiating Regeneration. 
This can target allies up to 28 meters for 10 seconds. This will heal us or up to three nearby allies for a good chunk of health over those 10 seconds. Now, the, this is kind of a little bit misleading on how it's written. What it means is that we can heal ourselves or two and two other allies or we'll heal up three other targets in the area. So most of the time I like to double cast this, especially in a four man group. That way I have a better odds of healing myself and all three other allies on top of it. Now next ability we have is still in the restoration staff skill line. It is the third ability to unlock, it starts off as a blessing of protection. We then morph it to combat prayer. This is a target area of 20 by eight meters. So what that means is eight meters wide by 20 meters deep. It lasts for 10 seconds that will heal us and allies in front of us or for a good chunk of health. But what we really want to use this for is this grants minor berserk and minor resolve, increasing us and our allies damage done by 5% and physical and spell resistance by 2,900 for 10 seconds. This is really nice, especially for the resistance to especially hit on tanks, but it can help our group out as well. That way they'll mitigate some damage, but we really want to try to cap the cast this on our dps because we really want to increase their damage done so we'll, they can burn through bosses or add pulls a little bit faster now the next ability we have is in our restoring light skill line it is the first ability to unlock it starts off as rush ceremony we then morph it to breath of life this is a cone up to 28 meters so what that means is it's kind of like a triangle shape in front of us so the further as it goes out in the triangle shape, the further away from us is our biggest area that we can cast it at and hit allies in. But the closer they are, a little bit smaller, but it works all around. So this will heal us or a wounded ally in front of us for a lot of health as a burst heal. And we can also heal one other injured target for some health. Now, if you are in, let's say, a trial group, you're probably not going to want Breath of Life because Breath of Life is like a single target and only can hit you and somebody else or two other people. And if you really need to heal a bunch of people at one time, you'll probably want Ritual of Rebirth here, which is the second ability to unlock starts off as Healing Ritual. We then morph it to Ritual of Rebirth. Yes, it costs a little bit more, but it's an area heal that will heal us and nearby allies in the 10 meter radius for some good health. And then we can also heal a single ally outside of that area for an additional health. Not as quite as strong as the other one. Again, Breath of Life is really, really strong for you or somebody else. But if you're dealing with multiple allies, then Ritual Rebirth is probably the one to go with here. For ultimate on this bar, we're all the way down into our support skill line. Start us off as Barrier. We then morph it to Reviving Barrier. This is a twin meter radius for 30 seconds that will protect us and nearby group members with a ward that absorbs up to 30,000 damage for 30 seconds so it's a very nice damage shield to really protect our allies what we really like this one is because the ward will also heal us and our group members for a good amount of health over the 15 first 15 seconds of the build now over to the back bar the first ability we have is up into our don's wrath skill line it is the third ability to unlock starts off as backlash we then want to morph it to purifying light this is cast at an enemy up to 28 meters it will last six seconds that will send the sunlight to doom the enemy dealing some magic damage and immediately marking them for six seconds after the duration ends the sunlight burst deals 3400 magic damage which increases based on the amount of damage we dealt to them over the duration up to 200 percent now as a healer, we're probably not going to be doing too much damage, but we really like to use this more for passives on top of it. This one also heals us and nearby allies in the area for some health every two seconds for 10 seconds. And just to keep in mind, you can only have one purifying light on at all times, so you can't cast this and then immediately cast it on another target. Next ability we have is down into the destruction staff skill line. It is the second ability to unlock, starts off as Wall of Elements, we then morph it to Elemental Blockade. This is an area of 18 by 12 meters, so 12 meters wide by 18 meters deep. It lasts for 15 seconds, creating a barrier in front of us, dealing some damage to enemies in the target area every one second. And for us, we are using a Lightning Staff, so this is called Blockade of Storms, that will deal shock damage to the enemies in the target area every one second. And this can set concussed enemies off balance for 7 seconds, so really nice thing to have for the group 
Next ability we have is up into our Restoring Light skill line. It's the third ability to unlock starts off as Restoring Aura. We then morph it to Radiated Aura. This is up to 28 meters and costs us nothing. And this will last for 60 seconds that can apply minor endurance, minor fortitude, and minor intellect to us and group members for a minute. Increasing our health, magic, and stamina recovery by 15%, which is kind of nice to have our resources having a little bit bigger of a buff. So that way we don't have to heavy attack as much and just keeping that going around for us. When we're on this bar while slotted, we gain these effects so we don't need to cast it. But again, always try to buff your group so you're going to want to try to cast this as much as possible. Again, since it's at no cost, it doesn't hurt to cast it and have it up. Next ability we have is also in the Restoring Light skill line. It is the fourth ability to unlock starts off as Cleaning Ritual. We then want to morph it to Extended Ritual. This is a 12 meter radius that will cleanse up to five harmful effects from us immediately when we cast it and healing us and nearby allies for some health every two seconds for 30 seconds, which is a kind of nice long heal over time. Now the nice part about this one is allies in the area can activate the Purifying Synergy, cleansing all harmful effects from themselves and healing for a good chunk of health so it's kind of nice if they have like poison dot damage on them or even like fire dot damage on them that they can cleanse it and get that off of them and not have to worry about dying from those next ability we have is down into the destruction staff skill line it's the first ability to unlock star stuff as four shock we then morph it to crushing shock this is targeting an enemy up to 28 meters this will give all the elemental energy of our staff to blast an enemy for some flame, frost, and shock damage. Now the main reason we actually want to have this is because enemies hit while casting are interrupted, set off balance, and stunned for 3 seconds. So if any, if you see any enemy channeling a spell or something, interrupt them and if the tank can't get to them, help them out by just interrupting the boss so that way they don't have to do it. And now another good option here if you don't like the crushing shot because sometimes you need to split away from your tank or maybe you just need to help the tank out in some sort of way. We can swap over to elemental drain which is the fourth ability to unlock. Starts off as weakness to elements then we want to morph it to elemental drain. This targets the enemy up to 28 meters for 60 seconds and inflicts them with major breach for one minute reducing their physical and spell resistance by 5,900. Which is really nice because this will now give our dps more damage against them because the lower an enemy's resistance is the stronger we can hit but we really like this especially for magicka base group even tanks especially we can apply a minor magicka steel to that enemy for one minute causing us and our allies to restore 168 magicka every one second when damaging them which comes really in handy also this helps us restore magicka as well so we don't have to heavy attack as often as well now the next ability we have or our ultimate for this bar is down in our assault skill line. Starts off as a warhorn, we then morph it to aggressive warhorn. This is a 20 meter radius that lasts for 30 seconds. This will increase us and our group members max magic and max stamina by 10% for 30 seconds, which is kind of nice. That way we got a bigger pool to either DPS, heal, or survive better with resources. But the main reason we really want to use this is because us and our allies gain major force increasing our critical damage done by 20% for 10 seconds so we can burn down the bosses a little bit quicker and overall everybody does more damage. Now I get you maybe not have these ones unlocked right away so another good option I like here is all the way found up in our restoration staff skill line so this will need to be slotted on our front bar. But it starts off as Pansia we then morph it to Light's Champion this is 28 meters that lasts for 5 seconds with a pretty low costing ultimate that we swirl our staff around us healing us and nearby allies for a good chunk of health every one second for five seconds which is a very short duration however any friendly target you heal gains major force for ten, eight seconds increasing their critical damage by 20 percent so we kind of get a little bit of a barrier going here and a aggressive warhorn all in the same one so this is kind of nice to use as well now oh. Going over the passives, as we go through, we are only going to focus on key passives for the build. Um, I still recommend looking at every passive and seeing how they can help you out in your build. So we're going to start off in the Adric Spear skill line. Uh, the one I really like here is going to be our Balanced Warrior. This increases our weapon and spell damage by 6%. This increases the strength of our healing ability, plus they increase 
two resistance help us mitigate some damage we take as well so that's kind of a very nice for us um down in the don's wrath skill line um uh, i want to start with um prism here because um casting an ability within the skill line we gain three ultimate while in combat so we got to be in combat to get that three ultimate this can only happen once every six seconds for us this helps reach our ultimate a little bit faster so we can buff the group with our war horn or protect the group with barrier or we can use our lights champion as well and the nice part about that is since our purifying light here lasts six seconds when the effect ends we know we are able to gain more ultimate again so then we can recast it to get our ultimate next we have um <clears throat> illuminate here uh this is also casting any ability in the skill line gives the group minor sorcery for 20 seconds this will help in magicka groups the most but it's still very important for builds as this increases our healing potential i would recommend keeping this up at all times so trying to always make sure that you're casting your don's wrath ability or since for us our parent light at least 20 seconds so that way we keep up that but again if you want to keep your ultimate up then you're going to want to keep casting it when the effect ends to get ultimate on prism and then i guess last one here we got a uh, restoring spirit this reduces the cost of our abilities by five percent whether it's health magicka scam or even our ultimate this is quite helpful as sustained for the builds you know for the build since Things cost less and we're more able to cast before we're needing to recover our resources with a heavy attack, so kind of nice to have. Then we got down in the restoring light. Uh, the one I like want to start with here is mending. This increases the strength of our healing capabilities with a restoring light ability by 12% based on how much remaining health our group members have. So the lower the health a member has, the stronger our heals will be. This comes in handy when a member reaches low health and needs to be topped off rather quickly for an upcoming damage mechanic. Um, next we have Sacred Light. While we're standing in our extended ritual here, we gain more, we gain minor mending, which gives us 8% more healing done. This effect continues for 4 seconds after leaving the area. This is a must have to really give our heals real power. With an additive bonus of increase the damage the amount of damage we can block by 10 percent so we can take a little bit more of a hit granted we're not going to be able to you know stop from a boss but it's going to be kind of nice and we want to go down into our destruction staff skill line and the one that i really like here is our elemental force this increases the odds of applying the status effect by 100 percent so what, this doesn't mean that we have a guaranteed chance to proc the effect. What this means is if we have a 20% chance to proc an effect, it now becomes a 40% chance to proc it. This is only when we have a destruction staff equipped, so make sure you have your destruction staff equipped to have it proc. Um, in the restoring light skill line, or restoration staff skill line I should say, um, the one I really like here is Essence Drain. Uh, when we complete a fully charged heavy attack, we gain major mending for 4 seconds. This increases our healing done by 16%. This will be essential for the build. This makes any healing ability we use very potent. On top of this, we also heal us, or rather, or rather an ally within 15 meters of the target, for 66% of the damage inflicted by the final hit on our fully charged heavy attack. This makes it very nice to have another way to heal group members instead of casting abilities all the time. Uh, another one here is Restoration Expert. This increases our healing by 15% for allies under 30% health. While we have a Resto Staff equipped, this becomes very handy to bring allies to full health quickly. This becomes essential for bringing group members back from the brink of death. Um, last, I would probably say here is Cycle of Life. This restores 30% more magicka when we complete a fully charged heavy attack, which is better resource return compared to a Destro staff. So the key here is do a lot of heavy attacks with your resto for better healing and more recovery. Now, as we go over armor, I'll be listing some passives that are found within each skill line. So for light, say light armor here, what you can find in the light armor for passives is we can have a reduction to snares we also reduce the cost of magic abilities. There's an increase to our magic recovery. 
there's uh increase our spell resistance uh gaining critical chance and stuff like that and we have more armor penetration along with other bonuses and penalties with penalties listed here and bonuses there now for medium armor what the medium armor skill line gives us is there's you know there's more critical damage and healing that we can have uh, we can reduce the cost of our stamina abilities here there's also increased stamina recovery there's the uh, increased damage done maybe even like a reduced cost of roll dodge along with other bonuses yes medium armor only has bonuses there are no penalties for wearing medium armor now for soul magic here the one that i like in here is soul summon this allows us to revive once every hour without spending a soul gem so it's kind of nice to save those soul gems for charging our weapon enchantment then for like the fighter's guild here you have the intimidating presence just for you know reduce the cost of fighter's guild ability by 15 percent but since we don't use any of that it just allows us to intimidate or intimidate npcs in conversations for questing purposes and that's kind of the same thing going with the mage's guild here with persuasive will allowing persuasion of npcs in conversation then <coughs> down into the undaunted skill line you have undaunted command here this activating a synergy restores four percent of our max health stamina and magicka so it's kind of nice to always use a synergy so that way we can keep top off with our resources and stuff like that so we don't have to heavy attack as much and then on Dante Metal, this increases our max health, stamina, and magicka by 2% per type of armor. And we're only wearing like medium and light on this, so we'll only get 4%. If we were wearing also a heavy, then we'd get a 6% bonus. In the Assault skill line here, you got a continuous attack. This is just to give ourselves gain major gallop of all times, increasing our mount speed by 30%, which is kind of nice to get around places. And for support, you got magicka aid here. So when we have our barrier on our front bar, this increases our magic recovery by 10%. Now for the race, we are running a Breton on this build. There are other good choices to run for races. You have Argonians, you have High Elves, there's Dark Elves, or any other race that you choose to desire to kind of run as your healer. But those are common, those are your common top races for a healer build. But I like the Breton because with the Gift of Magnus, this increases our max magic by 2000, so we got a lot more magicka pool to deal with so this will help with increase the amount of healing that we do on the build and then spell atonement this increases our spell resistance by 2300 um which is kind of nice just to kind of mi mitigate some damage but this effect is doubled if we are inflicted with the burn shield or concuss status effect so we can become a little bit more tanky not as strong as a tank but definitely mitigate a little bit more damage especially magicka based damage on top of it increasing our magicka recovery by 130 is kind of nice so we don't have to heavy attack as much on the build either then you got magicka mastery here this reduces the magic cost of our abilities by seven percent which is nice so that makes us be able to cast more often and not have to use a heavy resto or a heavy destro to get ourselves magicka back and just kind of nice to weaken some of those heavy costing magicka abilities now for alchemy we'll want medicinal use when using a potion results effect last 30 percent longer so when we don't have this the effects on your potions only last 39 seconds with the cooldown on your potions being at 45 so you got like six seconds that you don't have the effects of your potions give you so by having medicinal use your potions now last 47 seconds and so you have 100 percent uptime on your potions. so if anything that you get from this build get medicinal use it's the best passive in the game now for or provisioning on the build depending on what type like what food or drink you're using for me i usually use a drink so you'll want concierge so you'll want to add 20 minutes to the duration of any consumed drink that way your drinks don't you don't have to you know keep making drinks and all that stuff um if you're going to use a high-end food then you're going to want to use a gourmet to add 20 or 20 minutes to the duration of any food that you use now let's go over the gear that we are running on the build. We're gonna go over our slotable items. Currently, right now on the build, I was use I am using Witch Mother's Potent Brew. This increases our max magic by 2,800 max health at 3,000 and gives us magic recovery of 315. Now, if you want to and really want to go for the high end thing, the high end I would go with is the Clockwork Citrus Fillet. This is a dish, so this will be a food 
not a drink, so this will increase our max health by 3,300 with a health recovery of 400, max magic at 3,000, and magic recovery at 338. So, yes, you're going to get more bang out of your buck from your clockwork sister's fillet, but I just find it a little bit easier to always find which one there's potent brew and less costly compared to the clockwork citrus fillet. Now, if you feel like that you can overcome your health and want to just put more health on your build, especially equipment that you're wearing, and feel like you can handle with the Ghastly Eyeball, then the Ghastly Eyeball would be your choice for going just Max Magicka and Magicka Recovery, because this will have a lot higher recovery and Max Magicka compared to the Witch Mother's Potent Brew and Clockwork Citrus Fillet. For portions on the build, we are using Essence of Spell Power. This gives us major sorcery, increasing our spell damage by 20%. Major prophecies giving us spell critical rating, and then we restore magicka when we use this and give ourselves major intellect, increasing our magicka recovery by 30%. For 47.6 seconds, that's where medicinal use comes into play. There is a Gold Coast Spellcaster Elixir. If you want to use crown crates and stuff like that and use that, you can get this. It's basically the exact same thing. Now, starting off with our weapon, we have the Master's Perfected Resto Staff. With the Weakening Enchantment, it reduces targets weapon damage and spell damage by 325 seconds. Kind of nice, so that way allies and us don't take as much damage. That way we can heal a little bit better and make it a lot easier for us to heal. You'll want the power trade on this one because this will increase our healing done by 8%. Now, the Perfected Grand Rejuvenation gives us 846 max Magicka, which is kind of nice. The more Magicka, the more healing potential we have and stuff. And then on top of it, the initial heal of our grand healing invigorates us and group members affected for 6 seconds, restoring 216 magicka and stamina every 2 seconds, so kind of nice to keep those resources coming in for everybody. Next we have the Lightning Staff of Strategy. With the Crusher Enchantment on this, reducing targets physical and spell resistance by 1800 for 5 seconds. That way our DPS can hit a lot harder on those targets that get affected by this Crusher Enchantment. We want the Infuse trade here because this increases weapon enchantment effect by 25% and reduces enchantment cooldown by 50% so it's kind of nice to have a little bit stronger enchantment on this and then have it proc more often so DPS can hit harder for a little bit more often than not. Now this is part of the Wise Mage set. So for two piece item we get 634 critical chance, three pieces 634 critical chance, uh, 124 weapon and spell damage, and a 5 piece bonus enemy do damage with a fully charged heavy attack are afflicted with minor vulnerability for 10 seconds increasing their damage taken by 5% so it makes it able when we put this on a boss or a couple adds that our DPS are going to hit a lot harder on that boss or at there. I just want to show you real quick we do have it all the way lit up on our lightning staff so you gotta you can only proc this on your lightning staff since we don't have it on our front bar with the master's perfected resto staff here but if you want to and don't want to really run the rest of or master's perfected resto you could then run the restoration staff of strategy now for the headpiece on this we are running the symphony of blades mask this is a medium armor and this is our only medium armor blade on here now for enchantments on the build, we are using max magic enchantment on every single piece here. With everything in the divine trades because we want to make sure our Mundus Stone is at its strongest capabilities. But part of the Symphony Blade set, this one piece gives us 4% healing done which is kind of nice so we got a lot stronger heals going on. And two piece bonus is when we heal an ally who is under 50% of their primary resource, we grant them Meridian's Favor which restores 550 magicka or stamina every one second for 6 seconds. This effect can occur once every 18 seconds per target, so we can proc it on someone and let's say I have 6 second cooldown left, we can proc it on another target and then they'll be at the 18 second cooldown and then when it's 6 seconds over with our first target, we can proc it again on them, which is kind of nice that we can proc it on multiple people and that is not based on one person. Now the resources that are returned is based off the target's highest maximum resource, so if it's a magicka based character, you're going to get magicka back. If it's a stamina based character, you're getting stamina back. Other option here, if you don't have the DLC, you could use Sentinel of Rakuzma. This is going to give you our 4% healing done, kind of like Symphony of Blades. But the two-piece bonus here is when we heal ourselves or an ally, we summon the Dwemer Spire that heals for 1,300 health and restores 121 magicka and stamina to that 
us and our allies within five meters every one second for eight seconds. And this effect can occur once every 15 seconds. So it's not once every 18 seconds per target. It's a 15 second cooldown lasts for eight seconds. And it is only in a five meter radius. So the target has to be kind of standing still. If people are moving around, then they're not going to benefit from it. So that's why I kind of like the Symphony of Blades. Because if you got people moving around either in dungeons or in trials, you're going to get it procced off of them no matter what. Now for the chest piece, we are running all remakes here. The vestment of all remakes set gives us for two pieces 124 magic hero recovery. Three piece we gain minor agus at all times, reducing the damage taken from dungeon trials and arena monsters by 5%. Four piece item of 124 magic hero recovery and five piece cast an ability that leaves an effect on the ground. In combat, will create a circle of might for five seconds. Us and group members in a circle gain major courage for 20 seconds, increasing our weapon and spell damage by 430 for 20 seconds. This effect can occur once every 10 seconds, so it's kind of nice, especially if you have allies that group up, it's a lot easier to cast this, give them the circle of might, they're going to be doing a lot more damage. Now, if you got people that run around a lot, or maybe don't have a trial, as you can see that Alarime is a trial piece, and actually the, the, or the Wise Mage is also a trial set, so maybe you're not into trials and haven't got to it yet, here are some other options that you got for you. So... You could run Hollow Fing on the build. Hollow Fing Thirst gives us critical chance, max magicka of more critical chance, and whenever we critically heal or critically damage a target, I'll spawn a ball of Hemoglobin at their location. After two seconds, the ball explodes, re restoring 1,600 magic and applying minor vitality to you and group members within six meters of the ball for nine seconds, increasing their healing received by 8%. This effect can occur once every nine seconds. This is kind of nice, really, especially in magicka based groups because everybody's gonna need the magicka a lot even like tanks will need the magicka even if they're more stand based focus because of you know their blocking and stuff like that but it's always nice to have that human going going on and i do realize it is a dlc so even like things that you could use that aren't really more in the dlc you got robes of combat physicians here and the combat physician here gives your max magicka a critical chance critical chance again and when you critically heal yourself or an ally you grant your target a damage shield that absorbs 4,100 damage for 6 seconds, and this effect can occur once every 6 seconds per target. So we can proc this on multiple targets, and so we can have damage shields, so that makes it our job as a healer a lot easier because not everybody has, like, damage shields on them as well. You also have, like, robes or the Worm's Remnant that gives Magicka Recovery, Max Magicka, Magicka Recovery, and grants 140 Magicka Recovery to you and up to 11 other group members with within 28 meters of you. And this bonus persists through death, so if we're dead, we're still giving everybody Magicka recovery, which is really nice, especially because a lot of people need Magicka, especially like tanks and four-man groups. But even in like trials, this is a really good trial, like getting into a trial set. So if you're going into your first trial, this would be a good one to run to help everybody else out. Now a little bit of some other DLCs that if you maybe have that should be unlocked for you. You got Spell Power Cure, which is basically like all remake except for this one gives you max magicka max magicka 124 weapon and spell damage and this one is when you overheal yourself for an ally you give the target major courage for five seconds which increases your weapon and spell damage by 430 so another way to give them major courage except for this one you got to always constantly be healing and especially overhealing the target so if you're unable to overheal your target you're not going to help out your allies there and the major courage only lasts five seconds compared to the all remake where the major courage on this one lasts a little bit longer than that since it will last for 20 seconds instead of five now if you're able to craft you got the robes of julianos this is a law of julianos set that gives critical chance max magicka critical chance and adds 300 weapon and spell damage so this is just to kind of buff yourself up especially if you don't have any gear yet to get yourself going so a very good craft set to go with when starting out shoulders is part of the symphony of blades we got waist hands legs and feet of all arime and if you realize that everything is light armor from feet legs hands waist and shoulders and chest and the only medium armor piece is our head piece for accessories the neck we have of wise mage we add spell damage here with our arcane trait is going to be on all our jewelry here just to give ourselves a little bit more damage so that way our heels are a little bit stronger and then rings we went with recovery just make sure our recovery was at a nice level now let's switch over to our one bar build 
Now for our one bar build, I just want to show that all the slottables are the same and I would still probably use the Witch Mother Potent Brew and keep using the Essence of Spell Power or just use our standard uh, Magicka Potions because you won't really be benefiting from Major Sorcery and Major Prophecy anywhere. So that's what you'll want. You'll just want to trash Magicka Potion and basically... Now for weapons on this one, we went with the rest of Staff of Strategy here with the Wise Mage. Weakening enchantment, reduce weapon and spell damage on the target by 320 for 5 seconds and par because we want to make sure our healing are stronger since we can bar swap. Headpiece, we have Symphony of Blades here yet for the 4% of healing done because our sh chest, waist, hands, legs, and feet are all up for email yet, but we had to change our shoulder to the Wise Mage set just because now since we don't have a backup weapon and since we are using a one bar setup we have now the Oak and Soul Ring. So our neck here is still the strategy that we had before with spell damage and our ring is still the same with our Magicka Recovery Arcane Trait. And then our Oak and Soul Ring here we have Magicka Recovery Arcane Trait and this this Oak and Soul doesn't allow us to bar swap but we get a lot of stuff we gain. Major Minor Berserk, Minor Courage, Major Brutality, Major Sorcery, Prophecy, Savagery, Minor Force, Protection, Major Resolve, Minor Mending, Fortitude, Intellect, Endurance, Heroism, Minor Slayer, Minor Agus, and Empowerment. Definitely going to be doing a lot here and it does become very efficient on healing with one bar. Now for skills for the one bar has changed since we can only use one bar so our bar has changed to what we want to use. I'm using Illuminous Shards here yet just to give everybody that synergy of Holy Shards to restore magic and stamina. Again, if you don't like the shards and want more of a healing potency on the build, we will then want to go down to our Undaunted skill line with the fifth ability and use Energy or from more from Necrotic Orb to give off that healing synergy of Combustion and then give Magicka or Stam based on whichever one's higher. Then the next ability we want to use is our extended ritual just to cleanse five harmful effects from us. Heal allies in an area because we still are using all Arime, so this now gives us two ground effects that we can use. On top of it, give allies the opportunity to activate it by purify synergy to cleanse themselves so that way they don't take damage over time from poisons or flames. Then we want radiant regeneration just to keep a heal over time that if anybody steps out of that 12 meter radius of extended ritual they're still getting healed over time as well then we want combat prayer because we still want to buff our allies just in case they don't have let's say an old console ring that way they get minor berserk and minor resolve and then we have breath of life here because this is our nice little burst heal that we have again we can switch our breath of life there to our um our ritual of rebirth especially if we're in a 12-man group that doesn't especially on a trial that doesn't require us to bar swap that way we can definitely heal a lot more allies and we're going to heal them a lot stronger on our one bar build than what we would on our two bar build now for champion points on the build it does work for our two bar and one bar we have the same things so we're just pretty much going to go over slotted bulls here so on the green tree here we got treasure hunter just to increase the quality of items found at treasure chest that way we get better stuff so we can maybe get our purple gear all maxed out for stuff. Then we got Rationer, just adds 30 minutes to the duration of food and drink that our character has. Then we'll liquid efficiency here is whenever we use a potion or poison, we have a 10% chance not to consume it, so that way we save on potions and stuff. And then we got Steeds Plus increasing our movement speed out of, out of combat by 20%, so we can keep up with everybody and move a lot faster. In the blue tree here, what we have slotted is Soothing Tie, increasing our healing done with area of effect heals by 10%, which is kind of nice. And then we have Swift Renewal, increasing our healing done with healing over time effects by 10% as well. We have then from the brink, whenever we heal ourselves or an ally under 25% health, we grant them a damage shield that absorbs up to 11,000 damage per stage for 6 seconds. This effect can occur once every 30 seconds per target, so we can hit multiple targets that fall below 25%. Just remember though, it's going to take a little bit wider, longer for them to get that damage shield again if they fall below. Or if they fall below 25% and are still within that 30 second cooldown. Then we got Ever Living Overflow. 
over healing herself for an ally grants health, magic, and stamina recovery equal to 0.5% of our max magicka up to a cap of 150 for 6 seconds, and this effect can occur once every 12 seconds per target, so we can definitely give our group more health, magic, and stamina recovery, and this will give them 150, and this is included us as well. Now we got a lot of points into here. This is mostly just be able to increase the chance of applying status effects as well. Over into the red tree, we have Rejuvenate. This gives 90 health, magic, and stam recovery to us, so keeping our recovery high. Then we got Fortified, just giving us 1,700 armor, so making us a little bit more tankier. And then we got Boundless Vitality, granting 1,400 max health, so we got a little bit more health to play with, so we don't die as easy. And then we got Expert Evasion. Our next roll dodge is free of cost. After consuming this effect, we can't gain it again for, for 30 seconds. So at 31 seconds, we're able to have another free roll dodge. And then here, kind of where I have some other champion points laid out. So this, this will wrap it up for our Templar Healer. Thank you for your time today. I appreciate you making time for watching my video. Make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. It is free and goes a long way to help reach others and helps in the YouTube algorithm. If you want to stay up to date with future content, click the bell icon to get notified when I make a new video. If you want to hang out, you can follow me over at Twitch. I typically play as a weekend warrior over there. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you are wanting to message me directly, you can see me over at Twitter. Thank you all again. Hopefully I will see you in game or in the next video.